My day started out pretty much like any other day. I was bluebird, the air was clear and crisp. Everyone was kind of building off of each other's energy. It didn't take more than three or four runs to up the level of the tricks that we were doing in a big way. Oh, deep breath, dude, deep breath, deep breath. Ended up dislocating and breaking my neck, paralyzing me instantly from the neck down. His initial neurologic picture looked fairly catastrophic. I just collapsed. That is absolutely the worst thing any parent can hear. My world was ripped away from me in an instant. I can't roll, I can't roll. I'm gonna grab you and see some deep breaths. No matter what, I promise you that you're right here right now, I'm gonna ski again. I was drawn to skiing because just being in the mountains was so exciting. And as soon as I started being able to do tricks on my skis and I felt that first adrenaline rush, I was hooked. This is Mike's room. Um, in his room, we always had a pair of skis. These were one of his first pairs of um, twin tips. He enjoyed the freestyle very, very much. He loved skiing more than life itself. Mike was seven years old when he started skiing here at Silver Star. He used to watch Mike frequently. It was always fun to see him progressing and risk-taking and uh, succeeding. This was like his favorite place to be in the winter. He'd spend all of his weekends here, just park lap after park lap, jumps, rails, you name it. Okay, so this is a very exciting collection of his. His medals are in here. He really enjoyed, you know, the, the competitions. I remember he did a 900 and I was actually standing right beside the jump and it was the most exciting feeling. I just went, oh my God, my son has just done this. I couldn't believe it. It was, it was a real pleasure to watch it. And it was really, you know, it, was, it made me feel so very, very proud. He was definitely fearless on the slopes. He had no fear of, of um, going fast. He, he was pretty gregarious right at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. He loved going into the trees. So this was one of his favorite areas to ski. One day he went missing, and uh, so we had to go looking, and uh, we found him head down in a tree well, uh, wedged in the snow and unable to get out. This was Mike's walking stick that he used after he'd broken his ankles um, from the wakeboard accident and from the um, trampolining accident. Mike has had a number of injuries um, over the years. Broken both thumbs, torn both shoulders, hyperextended an elbow, cracked ribs, multiple concussions, but the worst two of all were both broken ankles. It was a harsh realization that I needed to step away from the sport I loved to rehab that ankle. Luckily, I was still able to be on the hill. I just couldn't push myself at all, really. So I coached all the young guns coming up who were the hopefuls for the Olympic team for Canada. So oftentimes I would just get to go skiing with them and you know like I was skiing on my days on and I was skiing on my days off. The main reason he he's good is because of the passion behind it. I always tried to be really methodical or like logical with how I would you know take sort of calculated risks but I don't know if you're not falling you're not trying right? I never thought he would do anything that he wasn't capable of and he was prepared to take the risk. There most definitely are risks involved. However, I would far rather have him um, doing something he loves, even if there is a degree of danger. My day started out pretty much like any other day on a ski trip with my team. 
It was our first contest of the year. I kind of knew what these guys needed. They needed to get their minds off things and they needed to just go and have some fun and do some skiing. Yeah, dog. Yeah. Just lapping Keystone basically had the whole park to ourselves. Everyone was kind of building off of each other's energy. It was your perfect kind of park day. There had been a man-made pile of snow made by a snow gun. A couple of the guys on Mike's team were throwing different tricks. Yeah. Mike ended up joining in with them, showing them how to do a nose butter seven. Oh. What? Oh. He was screaming, just all you could hear was him screaming. Deep breath, dude, deep breath, deep breath. Just chill, Mike, just chill. Ended up dislocating and breaking my neck, paralyzing me instantly from the neck down. Deep breath, dude. I can't roll, I can't roll. Deep breath, dude. That's just one idea. sec, I'm gonna grab you in C-spine. I heard the ski patrol arrive, but all I heard was, I need support, I've got a code black. Seven, eight, eight, five, code six, 105 North Avenue, 52. There's no other feeling like it. It's, it was the most terrifying moment of my life. We got a call that there was a uh, skier that had been injured and he had a, a fracture between his fourth and fifth uh, cervical vertebra and I knew he wasn't moving his arms and legs. I knew what the severity of the situation was, but it hadn't really sunk in until I started talking to the surgeon. I had to tell him he pretty severely damaged his cord and I explained why he couldn't move or feel things. And, and I, had, I had to tell him, you know, if you really want to have a chance of getting better, you, 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 we got to get it moving, we got to get to the OR now. The phone rang and it was a number I didn't recognize and I answered it and he said, we have your son here. We think he's broken his neck. And that is absolutely the worst thing any parent can hear. And I've always dreaded that phone call. I sat down just with a sinking feeling. This isn't real, this isn't happening. Like there's, it's nowhere near as serious as anyone's telling me. They told us that the best news they could give us was that it was an incomplete spinal cord injury. I'm gonna insert some small screws in here and then a rod on either side, right and left side, that will hook up to those screws and stabilize his spine. Going into surgery, I knew that it was my only chance. When I woke up from surgery, they installed two titanium rods and 10 screws, fusing five vertebrae together. Thinking that you're potentially never gonna walk again, it's, it's really hard. He had no feeling at all in his arms or legs. He had his hair all over the pillow and he had tubes coming out of everywhere. And he was very drugged, but he was Mike. And I just gave him a big hug. I knew that this was gonna devastate my family in a big way, and I was afraid of that. When you see your son in hospital, it's a parent's worst nightmare, and there's an intense feeling of helplessness. It wasn't very long before they discharged him, and then it was on to the hard work. Are they loading him into the ambulance? You have moments where you see him plugged into so many machines and tubes and think, 
you know, this is it. I mean, if this is as good as it gets, we've got a very different life ahead of us together. Okay, this is Anthony scratching his brother's head. There's a physical component, there's a mental component, and there's, a, there's, there's luck. Luck plays a component of a spinal cord injury. It absolutely does. You know, we learn to walk when we're, when we're one, one and a half. And we don't even think about it, it becomes completely automatic. Oh. You really have to learn how to walk again, in every, in every sense of the word. And I was already moving my arms, I was like, whew, you know, I'm gonna be good. This is gonna be okay. It was so far from good. Okay, you're on. There were times at GF Strong where I felt like I couldn't push myself any harder and I just felt like giving up. Smile would be good. <laughs> and I just said, I, I don't think I can. Like, I can't do this. Walk the... <laughs> what, anyway? To myself, I was like, what do you mean I can't? Can't shouldn't be in my vocabulary right now. Never should be. I can do this. And I tried with all my might, and I pushed so hard, it took everything I had. There were sort of happy moments, there were eureka moments, when you, you, know, you don't know whether to laugh or cry. Just making game. I got all this weight. I don't know if you can see the machine in there, but yeah, I'm really, really stepping up. Must be 500 grams on that bike. Yeah, there's at least half a pound. Had a good day today. Lots of uh, physio and OT and learning about like skin sores on my ass and shit. It's pretty weird. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in here, I'm doing it. I'm going to get after it. I want to go home. He, he kept progressing. Um, but it was one step after another. <laughs> this is just the, this is the A for the J? Yeah. It was a strain for him, but he was game for it, and he wanted to keep moving forward. It took me a long time to figure out how to do this. I couldn't lift my arms above my head. People say it's not your injury, it's what you do with your injury. He took each challenge and took it well, you know, and, and, and Mike, Mike took direction well, Mike knows his body very well. I think Mike's attitude has been a really, really big help in his continuing to achieve as much as he has. He was saying, I feel positive about this. I feel that whatever I have done to myself, I will continue to get better. He was, in fact, in the gym with a walker, and he was walking, and I just cried. It was so amazing. I just hoped and prayed that this would be the beginning of him being upright again. <laughs> That's a first, hey? It's crazy. Nice work, bud. It's like, it doesn't seem like it'd be a huge step, but it's like, feels so big. Gotta celebrate the small victories. No, oh, it's really yeah. sick. At that point, I realized that I could do this and I could handle whatever was put in front of me, I was gonna be able to do. And any challenge that I was given, I was gonna give it my effort like that and be determined. It was pretty remarkable seeing how quickly Mike's ability started to come back. He just said, it's like climbing up a ladder. I'm starting right at the bottom. And each time, it's just one rung after another. and look at me, can you believe I'm doing this? Can you believe I'm, 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 I'm walking on this, I'm doing this exercise?
I would have viewed it a huge success if he got half of what he got back. That's actually exactly what I wanted my wheelchair to be used for when I left this hospital. <laughs> Is a trolley. I used it to wheel my crap out here. He was so determined and made such wonderful progress that it wasn't 12 months, it was 12 weeks. And that was after doctors had said there was every chance that he might never be able to walk again. Seeing him walk out of there was just something very special. I got uh, checked out of the hospital two weeks ago, cleared by my doctor to come to Revelstoke to go sit skiing after only three months. I'm blown away. Being back in the mountains for the first time, it's like, it's pretty uplifting. Oh yeah. Holy moly, I'm skiing again. <laughs> That is the coolest thing ever. I can't believe that I'm skiing again. There were times during the last 48 hours where I've just felt pure moments of fulfillment and joy where I've been smiling so big inside that it's like, I hope it radiates. Oh my God, man. Oh my God. Oh, I want, I want to like, that was scary. Oh my God, the whole thing feels fucking weird. My head fucking kicked back like. Oh my God. I was feeling pretty sick to my stomach even just thinking about the possibility that I could have had another dangerous result to a crash on my head. And, the reality check was there. I mean, I want to be adventurous in my lifestyle, but I've got to be very, you know, smart, and assess risk properly. And I got a long way to go still. And Life had been going on for everybody else outside the hospital. For me, everything had changed and it was really difficult adjusting to life after the crash. So much of my life had been based around athletics and sports and what I could do, that now I was going to have to redefine myself. The hardest thing to overcome was that I wasn't gonna have 24 hour a day, seven days a week, nurse attention anymore. People leaving here at GF Strong to go out into the real world sometimes don't realize how much is being taken care of for them. It can be of a great shock to the point where sometimes they come back and ask for help. Even something as simple as just going grocery shopping, using forearm crutches and trying to carry all your groceries and stuff, it's like it takes effort, it's harder. Real life is hard. I'd be completely exhausted just from getting myself dressed. I was gonna have to be independent in taking care of my personal routines. It was uh, very, very difficult. The exercise was so important. I would usually 
force myself to do at least something every day that was working towards getting better, even though it was hard and I felt like not doing that stuff. I knew that the only way I could get better was if I did it. It's a gorgeous day in Niagara Falls, Ontario for the Wings for Life World Run. I'm joined by Mike Shaw. Mike, I know that you yourself suffered a spinal cord injury, so tell me what does the organization mean to you and what will you be accomplishing today? Wings for Life means a lot to me. I know that I'm very fortunate to be standing here today and to have the opportunity to run. Most people that have spinal cord injuries, it's not a reality for them, so I feel very grateful to be here. Really what it's about for me is just to be here and raise awareness and money for spinal cord injury research. Here we go, it begins. My goal was to run eight kilometers. It's starting to get harder, but I thought that was ludicrous after I'd started training and I tried running outside and made it three kilometers. I'm a quadriplegic. I broke my neck a year and four months and 17 days ago. I'm in a year and four months and 16 days ago they told me I'd never walk. So now I'm here. It didn't matter how much training I'd done, it was my it was the mental game that took over. Is that it? Am I done? Thank you, Wings for Life. Holy cow. We're gonna find a cure for spinal cord injury. That's what it's all about. It's running for those who can't and together we're going to make it happen. I totally understand how skiing is still the biggest focus of Mike's life. You can't want what you had. You have to want what, whatever you can get in the future. You have to be able to accept what's happened because it's happened and there's nothing you can do about it. Having all my friends with me on the one year anniversary of my crash and sort of celebrate the victory of getting back on snow, it was absolutely phenomenal. And hopefully this works. <laughs> I'm pretty damn excited. And turn. Yeah, my The experience of, of going skiing with Mike was one of the best things I've ever, ever been a part of in my life. The mountains symbolize adventure, excitement, adrenaline. It's just amazing to be back out here already. When I was in hospital, I didn't really practice any formal visualization techniques or anything like that, but I did absolutely see myself skiing wide open powder turns. It's been a really tough road. I still have challenges every single day, but I'm grateful for what this experience has given me rather than what it's taken away. Mike's learned so much and he's come so far from it. It's not just built him to be a stronger person, it's built me to be a stronger person.
What's hard for me might not be hard for you, and what's hard for you might not be hard for me. But you never know what someone else is going through. Whatever it is you're going through, you can persevere and you can move forward, especially when we're grateful every day.